Advent of Code 2024, Day 9, Disk Fragmenter. Um, basically, my input is going to look like a series of numbers like this. So they're calling it a disk map. And this disk map is um, alternating. Then each, each digit, so we just have 0 through 9, represents either a file or a amount of empty space on disk. And so this, in this example, we have a file of size two, then we have three spaces of empty space, then we have a file of size three, then we have three spaces of empty space, then we have a file of size one, et cetera. We also have IDs for each file, and they increment one by one. So this is file zero, this is file one, this is file two, this is file three, file four, et cetera. Uh, so when you take this example right here, and you expand it out, and they use the file ID to represent a file, so this is file zero, then three empty spaces, file one, three empty spaces, etc. What they want to do is move one block, so a piece of a file at a time, from the end to the first empty space. So we've got this two, and it goes to here, we got this two, and, and that's, I don't know why we'd ever want to do this, but that's, why we're, that's what we're going to do. Um, and when, once we do that, we're going to end up with something with empty space here, at the, all the empty space at the end, and then we need to calculate a checksum, which is just multiplying each digit, um, each file ID by its position starting at zero. So this is zero times zero, zero times one, nine times two, nine times three, etc. cetera. Um, and then blanks count as zeros. So we, once we get to the end, we don't have to worry about, we don't worry about blanks at the end. And uh, that's it. Let's see, I'm gonna grab this uh, example here. We'll jump over to VS Code. Uh, I will run my Genday script. I talk about this more in the intro video. Um, but it just gives me a folder, a stub, and my input from the site does not get the example text, which I have to grab manually because it's kind of always embedded in the text itself. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at input. Um, it's huge. Uh, I guess we could do a WC on uh, input.txt, and it is 20,000 characters. So one line, 20,000 characters. Um, so it's long. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, we don't need our standard. This is not good. Not what we need. Let's do data equals. And what we want to do is I'm going to try to make a list of integers. So I'm going to say list map int on f dot read. So I'm going to read in everything. I'm going to map when I loop over that everything is to be character by character. Um, I want to strip off any white space on the end. And that should give me a list there. We can double check this. Uh, Python day nine example.txt, and that looks great. Yep. Okay. Now I need to, I'm going to, I'm going to just, I'm going to do the exact same thing they did sort of take two steps and expand it out and then move things around. So to expand things out, we're going to need, let's make disk equals, and we'll make a list. We don't want to make a string because strings are immutable. We want something we can easily change variable values within. Um, we'll say for I in range. Uh, I'm going to do I len data two. So I'm going to know every other, I'm going to basically st take two across data. Um, and the reason is because I need to take, I need to alternate whether I'm doing um, extending, whether I'm adding a file or a uh, space. Uh, we'll need to track file ID. We'll do that. Um, although file ID could be I divided by two. Maybe we don't need that. But let's, uh, let's stick with that without that for a second. Um, so now we're going to say, this dot extend, uh, and now we want data sub i. That'll give us the numerical value we are in the list. So this first one will be a two times, and then we just want to have this will be the new file ID, which will be i divided by two. I think that's going to work. Um, then we can say if i plus one is less than len data, because if it's equal to or greater than the data. We've gone off the end of the list. We want to stop. Um, now we're going to say disk dot extend data i plus one times. So that's going to get, now we've read in the three, for example, and this is just going to be times, and we're going to use negative one to represent because we already, we have zero as a file IDs are zero plus. So negative value can just be our empty space. Um, and I think that's all we need. Let's give that a try. We're going to make this disk. And we can run this. Uh, let's grab, what did they expand this out to here? Uh, 
So this looks about right, zero, zero, then we have three negative ones, one, 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 three negative ones, two, three negative ones, three, 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 one, negative one, four. Yeah, this is perfect. Okay, we got it. Um, so now, let's see, let's put this up here. So now we want to say, now we need to go and we actually need to do the defragment. And so we need to uh, go from the, we're going to work from the end and we're going to uh, move it to empty. I think it'd be useful to have a list of empties equals, and this would be pretty easy to calculate, um, i for i comma val in enumerate uh, disk if val equals negative one. So basically I'm going to make a list of all the space, all the indexes of the empty space. So now what I can do is I can say, I don't think I need to, I think doing a for loop here will be dangerous because I'm going to be changing around things and I don't want to mess with that. So I'm just going to do a while true. And then I'm going to say target equals empties sub. I need to keep track of that. So we're going to say I equals zero. Target equals get the next empties. Uh, if, let me say, let me say disk of target equals disk dot pop. Now, there's a few edge cases we haven't thought about here. Um, first, we need to, what happens anytime we have, uh, white, uh, blank space at the end of the thing, we just need to ignore it. It's not important to us. So at the beginning of our loop, we're going to say while disk sub negative one equals negative one. So if the last item in disk is a negative one, we're going to disk dot pop. We're just going to pop it off. We won't have it anymore. And so as soon that we'll always get rid of any white space at the top of the disk. Now we also need to check that what happens if our target what happens if we, this is a bad, uh, what happens if we get to here and we now just popped, you know, our next empty was going to be in that stuff we already popped off. So we just need to make sure that uh, if target is less than, uh, is greater than or equal to len of disk, then we will break out of our loop because we're done. That's how we exit this loop when, when, when our target moves beyond the end of the disk. Um, and then otherwise we set that and we need to increment i. So effectively, we are going to step through the empties and until the empties are beyond all the data. Because we remove all the valid, you know, we remove all the empties that are between data from the end of the list. And I think that should do it. Let's see what we get here. Um, what do we have left? We still just want to print disk. So let's do this again. Um, do we have an example of what we're supposed to be getting uh, here? Grab you. We'll put. This here, whoop. And I apparently only copied that. Boom. I see. Zero zero nine nine eight one 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 eight 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 two. This is perfect. Ending in five five six. Yeah, cool. Okay. So this looks like it works. Uh now we need to calculate the score. So this is going to be uh, I times val for I comma val in enumerate this. And we need to sum that up. So we can actually get rid of that. And we run that and we get 1928, which matches our checksum here. So let's see, hopefully this doesn't take too, that wasn't too long at all. We, boom, all right, on to part two. All right, so part two, um, we've decided that moving all of the files, like breaking all the files up is dumb, which makes sense, I agree with that. Um, so instead we're going to pick each, we're trying to move each file once. So we're going to start from the highest ID and then we try to move it exactly once. Um, and so 99, nine, we can all, we're going to move as far left as we can in only contiguously. So 99 nine goes to this space right here. Uh, eight, eight, four eighths can't move. There's no, there's no gaps of four. Three sevens does move over here. Uh, four sixes can't move. Four fives can't move. Four four, the two fours can move here. It's the first gap of two. The three threes, there's no gaps left of it that matter. Um, the three, the, we don't try, so after threes, we go to twos. We don't try, we, each one moves once. We already moved four, we're done. Uh, two goes to this spot here. Ones don't move, zeros don't move. And that's it. And then we do the same check, check sum. So, uh, yeah. I think we have to start completely over. I've been thinking about this a little bit. And I don't think, I think we need a completely different structure for this. Um, so we're going to basically parse everything again. Um, so, okay. Um, I'm going to do for I 
comma val in enumerate data. We're back to the start. Um, and now we're going to store this in a series of, let's say, like files is equal to, I'm going to use a, a dictionary and spaces is equal to a list. Um, because the files needs to hold an ID as well. Uh, so we will um, loop over, we've got, we're going to loop over each of our data. And now for each item, we're going to say, oh, and, here, and, and rather than do that skipping thing, I'm just going to say is file equals true. And now we'll say, it'll say if is file. Uh, files sub i over 2 is equal to, and we'll store the ID and the size, which is the value. Uh, I don't know why I don't want to do IDX, we'll do I, I and value. Okay. Else spaces dot append, and we'll do the same thing. Uh, I come of val. We're saying we're going to store a list of open spaces and we're going to store a list of files. Um, and each of them, for each of them, we're storing the place they start and the length of it. So in fact, we could call this, rename this, uh, size. Okay. Now we just need to, uh, let's see, we need to keep track of, uh, we don't need to keep, so we just need to do uh, is file equals not is file. And that way that's how we alternate. Oops. Now we'll be alternating. Um, let's go ahead and check here. So we have files. Uh, we use Python on our example. Uh, so zero goes from zero to two. There's my example here. Uh, then one. So then there's gonna be three spaces. So that'll be two, uh, zero to two. Two to. Uh, it looks like we're not. Uh, we're not keeping our space. We gotta keep. We gotta keep track of our space. Um, so we will. Let's call this like pointer equals zero, and this is actually gonna be pointer. And pointer and here we'll say pointer plus equals size so that now we should move uh try that again so we have zero to two then one then we have three gaps because we have a three so zero one two three and four are gaps five six and seven are in one then we have three gaps again so that'd be eight nine ten so then eleven is two yeah so this is working nicely um Okay, so now we have that. We have our things stored in these structures, so we can say for file ID in reverse files. And this is gonna give us um, the IDs, so we're gonna basically it's gonna give us nine, eight, seven, six, et cetera. Uh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna say, we'll say like location size equals files of FID. Now that we have that, we'll say, um, we're gonna need a loop. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to loop over the spaces looking for ones that are big enough. Um, I'm going to be modifying the spaces uh, vector or array or list as we go. So I'm not going to use a for loop. I'm going to use while uh, we better, we need some sort of um, a space pointer space ID equals zero while space ID less than len spaces because we can't go beyond that. Um, We'll say space location space size equals spaces space id so we'll get the location and size for a space um if the spaces space size is equal to the size it's like called file size Let's see uh, if i refactor this does that go i wonder if that goes up above too file size oh it did i don't like that uh let's do file size and Five size. Okay, so if those two things are equal, what are we going to do? We are going to say that files of file the current file ID is equal to space location and file size. So the size doesn't change. Just use either size. Um, and then we're going to say spaces dot pop space ID. We're going to just remove that one. Oops. That was it. From the we remove that from the thing and we break this loop. So. We found a space, we remove the space, and we, we break the loop. If space size is greater than file size, so we have extra space, we're gonna handle this slightly differently. We'll say files sub fid is equal to, this will be the same space lock file size. Now we're gonna say spaces sub space ID is equal to, and this new one is gonna be the space location plus file size comma and then the new size is going to be 
space size minus file size. Yeah, because we've gotten we've shrunk that space by that much. Again, we will break. And if we if we get through, if we check an entire space and it's not none of the it's not it's smaller basically, then we just need to go to the next space. So we'll say space ID plus equals one. And let's try that. Um, if we run this on our example, uh, what am I trying to get here? Uh, what's changing? I guess files. Oh, files is changing. Okay. Um, let's grab the example. And here it looks like this at the end. I would put that here. Um, probably clean these comments up before I put it, actually push this to the repo. But for now, so zero, zero to two, that's good. Is nine two and too long? Cool. Then two is in four. Yep. Then one is in five for three. Then seven should be in eight for three. This is working nicely. Um, so then there should be a gap. So there should be nothing in nine. And then four, is that right? seven is in eight. So eight, nine, and 10. 11 is the gap and then 4 is in 12. So I think we've, we've done that. We, I think we've got it working now. Now we just need to calculate the, um, the checksum. Uh, and this one's going to be a little bit more complicated. We'll say part 2 equals 0. Uh, for file ID. Actually, we can do... Um, do we even need that? Yeah, we do need that. File ID. Comma. Size. Uh, comma. Location. Comma. Size. In uh files dot items now we're gonna get the file id the location and size we'll say for uh, i i don't think we need it in size we oh yeah we do for i in size nope we'll do for i in len oh, oh, range and then this will be we're gonna we want to multiply together the id times the um look offset the range so we're going to start at location and we're going to end at location plus size and so here we can say part two plus equals i nope file id times i uh i think that's right give it a try 2858 2858 sweet uh it ran for a second, but not like a crazy long time, but we did not get the right answer. Um, so let's see, what could we be getting wrong here? Um, I'm going to probably pause this and stare at edge cases for a minute. All right, so I've been looking through this, and I think I figured out an issue in my logic. Um, so I start at the, I get the files, and for each file, I work until I find a space that is long enough to hold it. The problem is, is I, when I get to three, like let's say I get to three, three, three here, and I don't, I'm not going to move it because there's no spaces. Well, my logic just keeps checking and it's going to find this space and it's actually going to move it backwards, which I'm not allowed to do. So what I need to do here is after I get the space location, if space location is greater than, uh, what I call it, loc location. So if, I, if my space is past there, I need to break. I'm done. I need to get out of here. Um, and that is going to, I think that's going to be my issue. So let's run this again. Um, and run this and jump over and here, and we got it. So um, that was definitely the issue. Um, it, it took me like 15 minutes of looking through the code to figure out exactly what was going on there, but um, it was not a good video, so that, that's why I paused it. Um, anyway, thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll be back tomorrow. Bye.